Well, as we mark the 10th anniversary of the bull market this week, it is worth considering uh, to what extent the Federal Reserve has played uh, with the spawning of a new generation of socialists, such as freshman Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. I mean, think about this. Under the leadership of the former Fed chairman, we saw quantitative easing, essentially the printing of trillions of dollars to drive up asset prices and bail out rich baby boomers and banks. The result, a millennial generation well, that seems to have gotten a short end of the stick. So is it any wonder that some of them are actually calling on the federal government and the Federal Reserve to pay for their economic proposals? Here now to discuss National Taxpayer Union Senior Fellow, Matty Doppler, and University of Maryland Professor Emeritus uh, Peter Marisi. Matty, let me start with you. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, they printed up $4 trillion, and there was a million programs that uh, the federal government designed all to save the banks. Right. So why wouldn't a millennial think it was okay to spend that kind of money to save the planet? Well, here's the problem I have with this argument that the Fed's quantitative easing is what spurred millennial socialists. Uh, you have to look at how millennials are functioning right now in this economy. To me, this is much more of a political communications argument. The notion that millennials aren't well off belies the actual data. You look at someone like me who is a millennial who is looking for their first job in 2008. I wasn't worried about the Fed's balance sheet. I was worried about whether or not I could find employment. Similarly, 10 years later, I've bought my first house, and I don't feel that I feel I don't feel that the economy hasn't supported me in all of the things that I've tried to accomplish as a young person who. Is moving through the ranks of this economy. I look back at my parents' generation, the baby boomers, this argument that's being made that they had an easier time with asset accumulation doesn't quite ring true to me. When my parents were buying their first house, uh, uh, mortgage rates were at above 10%. We were looking at less than 4% when we were shopping for our first home. So the economy right now is expanded in a way that has helped my generation be able to find a foothold much easier, I think, and this is right. despite the fact that we were coming out of a recession, much easier than for the ge other generations at this point in time. Professor Bernie or Bernanke, who helped get this socialist thing off the ground? And, 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 and despite what Maddie said, millennials are saying, hey, this is not just about us. We want this federal government and, and perhaps the Federal Reserve to help us clean the climate and do other things. Well, first of all, it's Bernie, not not Bernie. It's Bernie, not not, not Bernie Sanders, not not Ben Bernanke. Uh, basically, Ben Bernanke printed a lot of money when the economy had 10 percent and more unemployment. These folks are saying that at full employment, we can print a lot of money to pay for things, and we're not going to get much inflation. And they've got a lot of hocus pocus going on at second-rate universities, ginning up the kinds of arguments we saw during the Obama years when they were saying, "Oh, we can raise the minimum wage, and we'll actually create." Employment, as if the laws of gravity and economics were completely repealed. Well, look at what's going on in New York City right now. We've had the biggest drop in restaurant employment in quite some time because of the $15 an hour well, minimum well, wage. Professor no. Maurice, let me just jump in and ask you, though. In, the, in his recent letter, Warren Buffett uh, said that he no longer is, you know, he doesn't lose sleep over deficits anymore. And you've had some other relatively uh, well known economists out there who are now saying they don't matter uh, and, and maybe no. we can print forever. There's a difference between not losing sleep over deficits because the world is adopting the do dollar as essentially the single currency. Uh, in ways that it hasn't in the past, so that we need to print more money to get it out there and so on and so forth. You know, that's one level of deficit. That's a trillion dollars a year. It's quite another thing to say we're going to replace airplanes with high speed rail in 10 years. We're going to replace every single furnace and oil burner in the United States with a heat pump in 10 years. We're going to ta da ta da ta da, forgive all college debt. We're not talking about printing uh, a trillion dollars worth of bonds a year. We're talking about printing a hundred trillion dollars worth of bonds. You know, they selectively look at history, and, and they, but they always seem to forget the Weimar Republic and what happened there. Yeah. As for millennials doing so great, they're a barbell generation. You know, I'm glad that the other panelist is doing well, and my son in New York, who's 28, is doing very, very well. But 40 percent of young college graduates are in Starbucks-type jobs. Jobs that don't require my recent driver in, in, in Las Vegas going to a speech was a UNLV graduate. You don't need to go to UNLV to be a limousine right, driver. Right. The 40% are working in non college graduate jobs. Right. So they really are feeling some pain.
Maddie, uh, I'm getting to wrap, but I will give you a, a few seconds to rebut. Yeah, I would just argue that we've got an economy that can absorb people with the skills that they have right now, not the skills necessarily that they need. This is a product of an economy that has grown in a way that we need to stop. We need to stop over-educating people and under-delivering when it comes to jobs. That yeah. is a long-term problem that is not unique to just right. this generation. But I have faith that we'll be able to fix it, given that we've got seven million open uh, pieces of employment right now. That looking, uh, every business out there is looking for employees. They need to find out. Yeah, well, you know, also some, some people have to realize that you don't get a gold watch on the first day of work. That's All exactly right. right. Maddie and Peter, thank Where's you both. Where's mine? Thanks, Charles. <laughs> thank you very much. Hey, you know, there's a new talking point from the Democrats now is that the country is, quote, in a full-fledged crisis, but where are their solutions? Are they more concerned about stoking fear than solving America's problems? Mind the panel. We're going to delve into that next.